Hey guys, it's Stephen. Hello, Rachel. And Rachel. Um, Rachel had a couple of questions from a couple of patients who've been working on together this week. So, what we thought we'd do instead of me just asking and um, answering Rachel, yeah. uh, we thought we'd put a little uh, string of videos together. There's going to be three cases. Um, one of them's a instead of um, tracking, um, tracking pain. Great. So, do you want to go through the history a little bit there, Rachel? So she's got pain in her knees. Yeah. Um, she's obviously had a couple of dislocations before from sporting injuries. Very unstable uh, patella that's causing her a lot of pain. Great. So yeah, the patient's uh, 23? 23. 23 year old. Yes. Yeah, quite young. So uh, 10 years ago, she had an accident where she had some trauma to the side of her knee. Um, that basically dislocated the patella. Um, it's relocated, which is great. Uh, but she's now consistently getting problems. She's been to the NHS. Um, and she had one physio session. Uh, the physio told her to come back in two weeks time, um, but she wanted more um, intensive treatment because she's going on holiday and she wants to get better nice and quickly. So uh, we can do that at Perfect Balance, surprise, surprise. And I'll be seeing her tomorrow. Yeah, and Rachel's <laughs> got her booked in tomorrow to, to finish it off. So basically what we've done so far is to give her um, advice about uh, corrective um, orthotics, which she's actually just gonna go and buy off the shelf. Uh, so I think that's adequate for the problem that she's got at the moment. Um, she's not a very active person, so it's not like she needs to really go to a top-end solution there to control everything. It just needs to be something that she can easily access, something that she can do and she knows what's, um, what's there. And she obviously doesn't need the added expense because she's going to need some treatment um, on an ongoing basis as well. So we've just got to balance that up a little bit. Um, so we've um, hands-on work. We've basically loosened the side of her leg. We've used some acupuncture on the um, IT band and the vastus lateralis through the the lateral part of her leg here. Uh, we uh, haven't touched any of the exercises purely because there was, a, uh, there was obviously only half an hour each time we see her, so we try and concentrate on the most significant thing in that session, knowing that I'm gonna be referring her to this young lady um, to do the rehab afterwards. And that's quite important that uh, I always feel like it's better for the clients to have a very clear, defined role of my role and Rachel's role. So that if there's a problem with hands-on, then I can correct that. If there's a problem with uh, rehab, then Rachel can do that. Now, you might be saying, well, why doesn't Stephen do all the rehab and all the exercises? But remember, I want to deliver quality in the session. So if I concentrate on the hands-on work, Rachel then gets the client um, who can she can concentrate on doing the exercises. And what you'll find is that you can then get through a lot more in the session because you're much more focused. The outcome of that is the patients get really accelerated results and they don't get problems because there was a misinterpretation of the... Um, information that was given to them or there wasn't enough hands-on work because we we're trying to save time for the exercises so it may seem better to try and do it all yourself but actually you might be doing your patients disjustice if they need more intensive um, work as well so um, Rachel's question was really how to manage the knee in terms of taping so taping is one of those grey areas where she doesn't need to come back and see me for the taping if Rachel can tape in the same way then we'll find that we'll get similar results as well okay um, so and I'll also then be looking at her VMO activation yeah. trying to strengthen some of the other muscles around her knee. Yeah. Uh, so as you know we have the kinesio tape in the clinic and we've got lots of videos on the YouTube page which clearly show uh, different methods of taping. Uh, this is how I prefer for the knee to be taped and I'll talk you through why in a second. Um, but if you've done soft tissue work as well on the knee you need to make sure that you've used uh, a damp uh, paper cloth. So get some Get some of the couch roll, uh, soak it under the water, get a dry bit of couch roll, use that to take off as much of the cream as possible first before you start to apply the tape as well. It's a little common fault that I used to have all the time where you end up wasting the tape, but more importantly, the tape doesn't stick or it comes off very quickly. And the patient's email reception and they say, well, hang on, Stephen's charged me X amount, the tape stayed on for 10 minutes, I came out, I'm not paying for that and then they start complaining as well. So it's an easy way uh, to stop the clients complaining and I've learned the hard way. So what I do now is I make sure that the tape is super sticky and we make sure there's no film, uh, so, um, greasy film or yeah. cream on their leg. If they have moisturized their leg, then clearly that, that may be something you need to try and take off if you can uh, to, to help as best as possible, okay? Um, the way that we measure up the tape is that I keep it on here to start with. Um, the, the way that I prefer to tape the knee is to try and mimic some of the muscular action around there. So the problem with the lateral dislocation of the patella is that the lateral retinaculum um, is still intact. Um, and the, 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 the vastus lateralis through here 
and the iliotibial band as they contract at the hip and the TFL contracts at the hip, it's going to pull the, the knee uh, laterally. Now, you could look at that three different ways. So you could look at that as the knee being pulled laterally by the muscle contraction, so that's one way. Um, by me mechanically, when the foot's planted in closed chain, the femur rotating inwards, so a lack of gluteal strength at the top here. So Rachel would go through glute exercises for external rotation primarily and abduction uh, primarily as well. So using the glute medius and minimus, which mainly abduct the leg, although they internally rotate as well, so you need to be careful with that. Um, and the glute maximus as well. So many people don't rehab the glute maximus for some reason. Um, but if you think about when you're pushing off the ground and extending the hip, it's mainly the glute maximus that's using that. So you want to try and get off the ground, which will stop you from rolling into the ground. So that's the way I think about it uh, whenever I'm uh, rehabbing a client or looking at how to, to, to maximize the, the, uh, the time that I spend with them in terms of prescribing exercises. The third way is to look at the foot. So if the foot's pronating heavily, uh, then it could be coming from the foot as well. So you've got three different ways that it could be affected. So this is just dealing with this aspect and giving them much more proprioception around the knee. Uh, so we've got the patella area here. Um, and you can, you can obviously imagine the patella. So you've got the, the lateral part here, lateral inferior part. Um, so I normally describe that to the patient as being about uh, seven o'clock at the bottom of the patella when they're looking down at it. It's six o'clock at the bottom and then seven o'clock just round here on the outside of the knee. Um, so we want to try and apply the tape to the outside of the knee here. And I normally make sure that half of the tape is covering the patella and half of the tape is not on the patella. And I'll show you why in a second. As I pull the, knee, uh, pull the tape around, I'm just gonna make sure that I've got loosely um, a, a, a sling effect there that's gonna help to hold the patella um, medially. So you'll see why in a second. Um, so that's basically going to mimic what the action of the VM vastus medialis does. The oblique fibers, which are more uh, horizontal across the knee, um, we can add more tape on there and you'll find different tape and strategies to, um, to, to tape up the medial side of the knee as well. So some people would just tape the knee straight across there and then put tension on here and pull it across here. Now, the reason why I don't do that, um, and I normally find that the patients respond better to the teardrop shape application of the taping, but have a, have a go and see what response you get from the clients as well. So we need roughly about that much tape with Rachel. So I'd cut it like that. I feel like I'm on Blue Peter. <laughs> um, so I always tend to round the edge of the tape, and that's quite important because a, a, a sharp edge there is always going to catch on clothing. Um, so if you just round the edges of the tape first, just like that, it's quite useful just to have that rounded edge. So when you're sticking it down, it really does help. Um, so it's, uh, keep it on there for longer, that's, that's very important. Because if it's not on there, obviously it's not doing its, its job there. So um, I fold the tape in half just to work out where the middle is. So I know that roughly it's got equal tension above and below. And then what I tend to do is just <coughs> tear the tape along the crease there. I'll fold the tape back like this. And then I'm ready to apply it. So the way that I'd apply it onto the knee would be to make sure that Rachel's um, going to feel the full benefit. I'd try and think about when the mechanics of the knee are going to be more vulnerable to the, the patella dislocating. So normally the patella is going to dislocate when the knee's more extended, um, but not fully extended. So fully extension is going to really activate the quadricep muscles, which is going to stabilize the knee. If you've got a very overactive lateral quadriceps here, then that is going to pull it laterally, but it tends not to dislocate when it's in this position. Um, it tends not to dislocate when it's a fully flexed position either. Now, if it's in a fully flexed position, you've got a little groove, so just like my knuckles here, where the kneecap actually sits within. So when the quadriceps are tight and the knee's flexed, it's fully locked into that groove. It's quite nice and tight, so it's that, that baby ain't going anywhere. So it's not going to move very far at all. Um, so we don't need to have the tape pulling maximally there. Where we need most of the sport, and where most people are likely to dislocate their kneecaps, is really in that mid position. So we want the tape to be having maximal effect in that mid position, and it's obviously going to increase as the tension increases through that. So if I take the tape, apply it to seven o'clock, here we're gonna put maximal tension on the bottom part of the kneecap, and we're gonna stick that down. So you get maximal tension applied to the bottom, and then we're just gonna to start to bend the knee with Rachel, 
Good, so we go into that position, then we start to be clever. So what we're going to do there is hold back on the tape, and then we're just going to bend it around there, and we're going to stick it round. So it's basically going to replicate the VMO muscle. Now you didn't see that on the other side, but the end of the tape there, where I stuck it down, there's no tension on the end of the tape. If I have a piece of tape that's like this piece of paper and it's stuck down tight the whole way, as soon as Rachel starts to bend her knee and there's more tension there, it's just gonna pull off the skin. So if you don't have tension there, it's gonna pull against the edge of the bit you've not got tension, and it's gonna to start to stretch the bits in here, which is good because it's gonna give you more, free, uh, more degrees of freedom to be able to have a bit more movement in there. So the upper part's important, but the, the critical part is this lower part. So you wanna be careful with this bit in particular because that's where you get the, the, the deviation of the kneecap from and a lot more support there. So if we can do the same thing here, so here's the bit with no tension, just gonna take that bit off a little bit and you'll see why when you try this at home yourself, um, is that when you start to bend the tape around, you've got to apply the tension so the tape stays perpendicular to the way that you're uh, applying the tension on there. So we're going to pop that down, make sure we stick it down there, and we're going to join that back up. So we form the sling around the kneecap there. So this bit here and this bit here should end up in roughly the same place because we folded the tape in the middle and stuck it down there. And then we just rub the tape. So the glue on the back's heat activated. So if you rub it, it's going to help it stick a lot better. Okay, and just remind the patients of that as well. If the tape comes off, warn the patient that it may come off because if it does come off and you didn't tell them, then you might look a little bit silly. Um, but it's much better if you warn them and then they can have a good, a good knowledge. If it comes off, just let us know and we'll put it back on again. Or we'll give them some tape and they can put it back on themselves at home. How's that feel? Yeah, good. good. So what Rachel should feel is that as the knee's extended, you'll see the tape creases, so there's no support there. Uh, or very little support as the knee bends she starts to increase the tension in the tape which will support the knee and it should glide it immediately as well so it should yeah, feel quite good like it's going to cross those bits of tape great so it should feel nice and stable good yeah. great so that solved your taping question it does thank you very much that's okay it's my pleasure take care guys see you later